Whether you're an artist, a musician, a music exec, a songwriter, a producer, or just anyone who wants to get into the music business and you have to create an LLC to do so, how do you run this thing? As a creative, we got to make some processes simple. Now, I know all this information is not out there. I know we like some knowledge when it comes to business and adding a music creative element into it. This has always been an issue, left brain versus right brain. I understand that. I've been through this process myself, right? It's taken me three years to figure out some of these tweaks that I'm going to give you today. I'm only giving you six, but I'm really going to help you out with this. Now, this should be laid out for all artists. I've done this with my 60-day record label course and audiobook, but I'm going to toot my own horn on that later in the video. Right now, we got to hop into the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham, and with all that being said, Let's hop right into it. The key to making money is saving money in the process of commerce. Now, this may seem like a really simple statement. I understand that it may seem like a really simple statement. The thing is, once you start to spend money as a record company, the first thing you're going to do is spend to get the job done. You're not quite thinking about how much am I going to save on this transaction to get the same amount of work. All right. That's usually somebody who's a little bit more finance savvy. But after you get down the line a bit, you're going to say, man, you're going to ask yourself that exact same question after you spent a lot of money. How can I save more money, get the exact same result, right? So I can have more money to fund more things later. Now, looking at all these stats and these analytics right here, you're going to need some type of software, right? And you're going to have to learn how to count your money. This is tweak number one. In the beginning, I have money to spend. I'm just spending this money. I'm going to get my product. That gives you a bit of rush of, I don't know, what, what, what do you call it? Uh, a dopamine in your brain. I spent some money on studio time. We came out with some great records. I'm happy. Or I, we got our records mastered. Or we spent money on artwork. It looks dope. I'm happy. Okay. How much did you spend? How much is gone and how much do you have left? How much money do you have left until you have none? Or until you have to go back to work, save up some more money, and drop it into the business. This is called an owner investment. That's for another topic another day. But you have to keep putting owner investments into the LLC. So you need to know how to count your money. This is just basic stuff. How much money do we have? How much time do we have until we're out of this money, which is your burn time or some lead time? All right. And then how much do we need to re-up on? See, QuickBooks Online will save you at the end of each tax year and each quarter with this. Your profit and loss, which is what we talked about like on the Rust video a few weeks ago, statements will read almost identical to your Schedule C. And you can really keep track of the cash flow of your business so you know how much you have on hand and how much you need to borrow or how much you need to just, you know, you, know, you work your regular W-2 job, you know, you go to work, save your money, and just invest it into the business or dump it into that business bank account. That's called an owner investment. OK, you learn how to count your money right here like Scrooge McDuck and we can keep an account of everything and we're ready to go. Now, this is the first stage of running your LLC, knowing how to count your money. I know it's more stuff to buy. QuickBooks is going to run you 30 bucks a month off the off the rip. I used to use QuickBooks self-employed. It was horrible software. I got QuickBooks online. My CPA loved it. They loved that I was so organized. I loved that I was so organized and I could see everything and how much money was going in, my business profit, all that stuff. Once I saw that, I was like, oh, now I know how much I need to invest. I can buy this camera. I can buy that software. I can get this program, that, this, that. Now I'm spending money for my business, um, you know, with a little bit more focus. All right. So that's tweak one. Tweak two is don't pay other people's taxes. Because when you have to pay other people amounts over $600, I'm quite sure you heard this, you need to issue 1099s. Now, BMI may have sent you a statement and they gave you a 1099 grade. If you made $600 in royalties, I'm happy for you because you're doing it. Okay? But now it's your turn to issue the 1099s. Now, why? Because you don't want to pay taxes on that money. That's why you got a 1099 from ASCAP or BMI or the MLC or Sound Exchange or all of that. QuickBooks Online allows you to collect the information for their W-9 securely so that at the end of the year, you can send them 1099s quickly and easily. So the reason why you would want to do this is if you're paying your manager 20% of your gross or net earnings. You don't want to pay taxes for the money you had to pay your manager. On top of that, 
the engineers that you use on a, on a weekly basis, you know what I mean? Maybe you're just paying them, you're going to their house or their home studio, whatever, and you're paying them a lot all the time. Let's say you got some subcontractors for a recording studio and you needed to pay them. You might issue them a 1099, 1099 but business to business, you should be okay with that, okay? Um, but anybody else you have to pay personally that might not have a business or they may have maybe a single member LLC, issue them a 1099. Tell them, hey, I paid you X amount of dollars over 600. I'm not paying you. I'm not paying taxes on this money. I paid you for that. This was contract labor. And that's what the 1099 is for. Believe you me, this money adds up. And paying taxes on that is not fun, especially when it's not in your pocket. All right. Now, here's the next tip. Paying your taxes quarterly. Many people will not tell you that you have to pay quarterly taxes with an LLC. And when I first started three LLCs ago, I was like, I'm not, you know, I really don't have to pay any taxes. I'm good. It wasn't until money started to stack up that I was like, I didn't know I had to pay taxes quarterly. You do. Because if there is money left over that you're taxed on, so let's say you profited $10,000 for the year and you get taxed on that $10,000, let the IRS find out that you didn't pay them quarterly. And they're going to say, oh, well, you know what? In addition to the tax that you owe us, you owe us a penalty for the months that you miss or the quarters that you missed on your taxes. You get what I'm saying? So you're going to want to pay this stuff quarterly. Now, if you pay quarterly, I understand this is a pain. But if you pay quarterly then and you overpay, then you get that back as a refund. As business owners, LLC owners, that's how we get refunds. How do you calculate this stuff? Well, good old QuickBooks will give you a calculator once you insert all your accounts. It will tell you about how much money you need to pay every quarter. So that's good. Like I said, they'll issue 1099s on your behalf as well. That's why we need to know how to count our money. Now, our next week is this, because when we need to get money, we need to look right. Now, this is inside the course, but this is a little bit of an excerpt from it, just tweaked for YouTube. So, NAICS number, what type of business is this? Somebody asked this on the YouTube or made a comment about it. And they said something about, you know, the record companies being high risk or knowing what's, what high risk businesses are. Record companies are not really high risk like you think they are. In the physical, it may seem that way. They may go bust a lot. But at the end of the day, banks, lenders, they know that your record companies can generate a lot of cash flow very, very fast. Because of that, let's read this. This number is necessary for your financial profile. Keep it the same across the board. Record companies may be high risk physically, but on paper, they aren't for the banks because of how fast money can start flowing in for the asset that we're going to talk about in the, in the next slide or two, okay? So, your number for record promotion, excuse me, record production and distribution is 512250. So, all of these places are going to ask you, what type of business are you? What type of business is your LLC? And you're going to say, oh, I'm 512250. The bank is going to ask you the same question. What type of business is this? Oh, this is a uh, business 512250. The IRS, your CPA is going to sit down and file your taxes, or if you go to H&R Block or whatever, you do TurboTax. What type of business is this? Oh, this is business code 512250. Your lender is going to say, what type of business is this? Oh, this is business 512250, because that's what they recognize the business as. Now, obviously, it's record production and distribution. You can go on NAICS.com and just play around with the site and look up this stuff. I'm just giving you this one as a freebie. But this is what you're going to read across the board. So when you when you sit down with your first lender, which more than likely for most people is either going to be American Express on a PG credit card, whatever, you're still going to get some money there. You get what I'm saying? They're going to ask you the type of business and they want to, now they're not going to look it up. The algorithm is going to look, look you up. When the algorithm goes through all of this and they see everything is the same, including some more things being the same, that's in the 60 day record label course. Uh, then they're going to say, cool, here's 20000 Bam, right there. You know what I'm saying? That is if you got good personal credit. Now, on a PG, that's what that means. Okay? With that being said, let's go to the next one. It's a little bit of tweak there. Now, when should I structure as an escort? Some of you all wanted to know about this. Some of you all had comments to say that I don't think that this should be reserved for the general public. You can find information about escorts on YouTube. I'm not going to explain this to you for all of my new musicians out there. 
This is best reserved for if you book a call with me, we talk about it. But in the beginning, if you haven't surpassed $50,000 in profit, not revenue, but profit, this isn't even a, a conversation yet. You know what I mean? So S-Corps are best used when you're profiting $50,000 plus during one 12-month period. How would you know this? Because you'll start to realize if you're using QuickBooks, good old QuickBooks back here will let you know that you aren't accumulating enough write-offs to reduce your tax liability to a reasonable amount. And this is one thing I learned because you have to have tax planning. This is when you're going to go sit down and do some consultations with your CPA and say, what can I spend money on to increase my business and still reduce my tax liability? Okay. In the beginning, you're just not going to have enough write-offs. You will know that. You will realize that, oh, this tax amount is stacking up. Now, the switch is usually made halfway or three quarters of the way through the year. Why is it made there? Because at the end of the year, the last quarter, December, well, October, November, and December is going to be your highest grossing months because everybody's ready to spend money at that point. The switch saves you from double taxation. Okay? I'm telling you, that's when you do it. Nearly 90% of you all are not even there yet. You're just learning how to get your merch stuff off the ground. All right? So things can get a little complicated when it comes to this. This is not for the newbie. S-Corps, C-Corps are not to be played with. You have to structure them the correct way. Therefore, I won't go in depth on this channel with this. Okay? Now, here's your LLC assets. This is what the banks and the lenders like to see right here, okay? LLCs are designed for asset protection. That's what they do. They protect your copyrights, your business from you personally and your customers, your money from you personally, and your gear and equipment from you and the outside public and all of that. Let your LLC own your copyright to protect them from you personally. You get what I'm saying? So the banks see this asset. They see that you're a record company, and they realize that, oh, Okay, if given the right amount of time, this company is going to really build the value of this asset. It's not like you're buying a house and there's already equity built in. You're going to have to build equity into your intellectual property, which is your copyrights, trademarks, and all that stuff. But this LLC is doing this. So when you use the LLC for its protection, it is now going to, it's going, this is your first form of insurance. A lot of you all get the LLC and you still own the copyrights personally. Now, you're not even saving yourself. So you got to put everything into the business, the copyrights, the trademarks, the gear, all of that stuff to protect yourself here. And this is going to be your first insurance policy. That's a tweak that's going to help you run your LLC the right way. Putting all your assets, your copyright assets underneath the umbrella so that the LLC is running like it's, it's doing what it's designed to do. It's not there to just give you some tax savings, if that's even a thing. You know what I'm saying? So check it out. Okay, but how do I make money? Well, I just said it. Increase the value of your assets, the copyrights, your intellectual property. This C right here stands for your publishing. This P right here stands for the phonogram. All right? This is the masters, and this is the publishing. And this is your unregistered trademark that you can just put this on your name. And as long as you're doing commerce with it, you're good. You don't really need to register your trademarks off the rip. Save yourself a little bit of money and time for, for in the beginning. You build this intellectual property. Once it's built up, then the banks are going to be like, hey, we got collateral here. You know what I mean? The business got cash flow because we saw the P&Ls from your QuickBooks. We see that you're operating correctly on paper. We see that the business owns these assets, which makes this much money. This makes sense. They're worth this much. Let me give you some money, man. Let's make some money together. All right? That's really how. That's really what we're doing. Well, I thought there was going to be more fireworks and sparkles and all. This is, this is just business. The sparkle and fireworks come from your return on investment, not get rich quick schemes. Here, that's supposed to be a T. We got to do business now. There's no way that you're just going to rise to the top of this business. Business is difficult. Business is warfare. So that's just what it is. You get what I'm saying? Well, what about all the funding? Well, we, if you're broke right now, the last thing you should be worried about is funding when you can't manage an extra $1,000 in your bank account. 
If you don't know how to flip a thousand dollars and get another thousand dollars out of it, how are you going to flip a hundred grand and pay the lender back and then keep your profit? You got to flip a hundred dollars first before you can flip a thousand. You got to flip a thousand first before you can flip ten thousand. You flip ten thousand, flip fifty. You flip fifty, flip a hundred. Because if you can start to show and prove that, then you'll get more money. You get what I'm saying? And and just having the LLC alone, even if you were to apply for a PG credit card, business credit card, they're going to start you off with anywhere from 10 to 20K. You get that 10 to 20K and you start paying money, but you charge it up, you pay money back, which in the beginning is not really going to happen for your record company. So you don't really need it in the beginning, right? You need to start making money first before you go apply for that. But when you do, after that first month of paying back, the lenders are coming like, hey, I got 100000 I got two hundred. It's going to start flooding your box. You might get approved for it. You might not. But now you know that the offers are there. But if you can't flip this $1,000, what's the point of you going to get hundred grand to try and flip? Money is a discipline thing. If you can't be disciplined with that, you have no business doing that. I got another video coming up on that, but I just wanted to say that. That's what's going on with the funding. Right now, purchase the 60-day record label course below because the stuff about setting this business up, I go into more grave detail and I give you more game than the book itself. That's the one that you all have been getting. All right. And we do have uh contracts that will be coming here in the next 60 days. Ah, no pun intended, but it's actually coming. All right. So you will have all of those walkthroughs and really know how to run your business doing the 60 day record label course. All right. Grab the book if you can't wait, you know what I mean, on, you know, being able to afford that. But I do have uh, the course broken down into payment plans as well. So that being said, if you need extra help on this stuff that I was just talking about, book a call with me and we'll develop a strategy for you to actually increase your revenue. Because that's really what I want to help you all with. You know, you can do all this stuff down below. All these links are right down below the video. Okay. At the end of the day, it's all about running your LLC. If you can run the LLC, then the LLC can actually make money for you. If you can make money, then you can go get more money or you can get leverage. You can get a lender. You can get some credit. You take that credit, you flip it. Once you flip that, you get bigger profits than what you're generating with the money that you're just making by itself. Use other people's money. Got a video coming on that, all right? Hopefully, I provided you for, with more clarity to be able to run your LLC properly. With that being said, Music Money Makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Download the 60-day record label. Grab the course. Book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com. Visit musicmoneymakeover.com, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.